in his birthday. At the refuge. It was the day before when Jeanette left. And she gave me some special gifts. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> she gave me some special gifts to give to her husband the next day on his birthday. And there was jerky. And there was trail mix. And there were some special things. But the problem was, we got in the truck. Now, I thought this was a secret. So I... I'm getting inside the truck with Lavoy, right? And he says, where's the jerky? <laughs> she had to have told him, okay, so what kind of secret was that? Anyway, so I go back and I get the trail mix and the jerky before we get in the car so we have something to eat along the way. Um, anyway, today would be his birthday. I've known Lavoy. I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> I've known the boy for a long time. I was really good friends with one of his uncles. I knew his mother and dad. I knew his whole family. I knew his grandmother. I knew the little boy's heart. I knew how he was raised. One day, after we had been, um, a few months earlier, we had been out on the, at the Bundy Ranch, okay? He calls me up a few months later. Um, and said, you need to come to our place to have this meeting. And I was meeting with Cliven and Ryan and a bunch of ranchers. And we were talking about the simple constitution is what I call it. The simple constitution. We need to teach the ranchers and the county commissioners and people about what we were teaching at the refuge. Anybody remember a little thing about natural law? Do you remember hearing how we taught about the natural law? How natural law is the basis of the Constitution. And in that natural law, we talk about what is it? It's what happens in nature, right? It's, I don't care what you call it, but any, if there's a male and female are the only ones that can create babies. We, if you have birds that fly south for the winter, who told them? Or you have cows that trail in lines. Nobody tells them. It's nature. That's natural law. That's what God did. We are natural being created by God. And because today's Sunday, we're going to talk about this, all right? Because we were created from the very earth, it says it in Genesis, and we have one God who created us. And that, my dear, is natural law. And that's how we got the Constitution. And so... When we were trying to teach the ranchers, we said, okay, let's pretend that we have an iPhone store. And now everybody, is, is it's Black Friday, and the first 10 people who get in line get a free iPhone. When do they start to get in line? Uh, midnight or the day. Okay, and they're camping out now. I mean, they really go all out. So how do we know that the first person standing in line gets the first iPhone. Because he's the first in the line. He's the first in time, right? Okay, so now I run up and I jump in line and I'm number five. But I didn't get there till like two o'clock in the morning. And we've been standing there and we've all claimed our spot. Because you know something, we all have rights that God gave us. Now the government didn't give us rights. They give us privilege, right? And they can take them away. But we have rights. So now we're standing in line. And if you have a right, you have to claim it. You have to use it. You have to defend it. If you don't do all three things, you have no rights. So now we're standing in line. I've claimed my spot. Dang it, 6 o'clock. And I've got to pay. Okay. So what happens when I get out of line? Use it or lose it, right? Oh, man. But we do have an exception only with moral people. We say, and the only moral people stand in line, by the way. So I turn around and I say, oh, could you hold my spot, please? And then when they say, well, sure, I'm just, I'll be right back. And I'm going to run to the bathroom. Well, if I go out and get a drink and, and a breakfast sandwich, and the longer I'm gone, what happens? 
I probably lost my spot because I didn't use it, right? That's right. But if it was for a short time, but I didn't. I ran right back to that line. Now comes along, well, I'm not going to say Chris Bryles because he's a hero. <laughs> Somebody big and strong, and he jumps in front of me, and he says, and, and now he's stealing my spot, right? He's stealing my spot. And I'm saying, whoa, wait a minute, now i got to defend it. Oh, man, because if I don't defend it, I only own spot number five. What happens to person number ten? They just lose their iPhone. I can't steal his iPhone. I only claim this one spot. So I gotta defend it. Oh man. So my thought is number ten, help me get him out, right? <laughs> because first of all I say to him, because I'm gonna be nice and I'm gonna say, Oh, excuse me, sir, but you're the back of the line's back there. Right? And if he's moral, he's gonna, oh sorry, and he'll go to the back of the line. But what if he's not? And he's just a bully. And he says, ah, uh, yeah, well, so make me, lady. <laughs> That's when I go to 10. All right, help me out. And you knew I was here. So now we get all 10 people who've sort of formed a, an alliance because we know that we are witnesses that we were here first and we get that we now know who gets the 10 free iPhones, right? So they help me. And, they, and he's not going to fight 10 people. And he leaves, right? Because you know what we formed? The government. So what is the government? The people closest to the person who can't defend themselves help defend them, right? That's natural law. So natural law is God's law. That is common law. Now, that's what we were teaching. So what is the virus? What is the virus they were trying to shut down? that we were teaching natural law. Because, na because common law is the supreme law. It's the law that rules the United States. It rules the world. But we allowed an admiralty court to come amongst us and they put themselves above us and they think that they're the king. And those judges and those attorneys can take anything they want from you. And that's what I saw happen when we got arrested. Now, I was really worried because I love Lavoie. I had no idea this was going to happen. I wasn't even supposed to be inside that truck. I was busy doing something really important because Alan kept saying, just, you know, I get kind of sidetracked on lots of things, but I knew that I was really had to go and find the files. I was looking for the information because we knew that there was information inside the Mallier that exonerated the Hammonds. So I was searching and I was making copies. She asked me that question. I made triplicate copies of everything and then I would very carefully put them back where I took them from because the government's are very organized, you know. And, and I have worked in many, many offices, and now I'm a secretary to everything. So you will see me always carrying a oh, pen in my ear, a notebook in my arm, okay, because I'm taking notes. So I was looking for all that information, and fortunately, we got all the Hammond stuff out. <clears throat> and it left the refuge in many places so that it could never be confiscated. Because we were going to protect and save the Hammonds, right? Well, something else happened in that refuge, and I couldn't talk about some of this stuff, and I couldn't talk about the stuff that happened in Lavoie's truck, because there was so much litigation going on, and they put a gag order on me, and then I have to tell you this one thing. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. That's the truth. So don't say anything. Keep your mouth shut. I have to look my notes so I can remember not get too sidetracked. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to go back a little bit more about Lavoie. 
So one day after we had had this presentation and teaching them about the simple constitution, I had gone, I was at home and the boy calls me up at Sunday morning and my husband and I were asked to speak in church. It's 10 minutes before we walk out the door, I'm ready to go, and I get a phone call from Lavoie. And he is 10 minutes away from my house. Now, he lives about 40 miles from me. And he says, I'm headed out to San Juan County, to Blanding, Utah, to help the commissioner out there who was standing to, to protect his roads, right? Ooh, the same place that they killed Dr. Red. Oh, my wordy. And he said, God told me that you need to come with me. <coughs> okay. Um, so I turned to my husband. And because <clears throat> he was a high councilman for a few years, he can speak a long time. And I said, would you be really insulted if I back out and go with Lavoie <coughs> to Blanding? And you speak by yourself. And he agreed. Because I knew the boy. I knew that he has a good heart. I didn't even know what we were going to do. But I knew that it was important. So we got in the truck. And we rode to Blanding to help stand for a commissioner who had taken the step to do the right thing against the federal government. Now, if it had worked out like it should have, we would have still probably been in Blanding. Instead of, this was on November the 22nd, right before Thanksgiving. So what happens on New Year's Eve? Ammon has called us to come to Oregon to help do this little march. I didn't know LaVoy was going. He doesn't live next door to me. He didn't say he was going. I had no idea. All the people that I had coming were, again, I was the head of the tea party. We had a bunch of people who were ready that would go when, we, when they were called. And the funniest, crazy thing happens that none of them could go. They had operations set up. They had that somebody was sick. Somebody they, they, they just couldn't go. And that's why there was very few of us that went. <clears throat> I actually got one of my cousins to go. Anyway, I knew that I was supposed to be there. I don't know why I'm supposed to do these things, but I, but I was supposed to go. God called me. That's absolutely right. Okay, so um, Lavoy was doing what he knew was right because it's called love your neighbor. And he stood for his neighbors, and he wanted to stand for them. He knew that we have natural rights. And that's why we had to go help the Hammonds. We had to go help Phil. We had to go help the Bundys, because that's what we do. Um, and he knew that he had done soul searching to say, I have to stand for the Constitution, because now I know. I believed, I've been taught, but we were taught a lot of wrong things. But he decided and he knew that he had to live true to what he knew was right. And he was doing that. He was putting it all on the line because he knew that. Those Bundys didn't have to go either. But they were coming to help their neighbors because we learned one really important lesson right there in Bunkerville, and that was that the power is in the people. We knew that if the people show up, they can back down these people, right? They knew that, we knew that, we saw it happen. When we came to that refuge, and he talks about that eagle that flew. Now, I didn't come at the exact same time they did. I came right behind with Ammon in our caravan, and when I saw that eagle sitting on the fence, I knew, I knew they're so majestic. It was a sign. I didn't know they saw it when they went through, but I saw it, and we made that comment, this is God's work. And so when we got there and everybody was 
full of love, you know. We, everybody was there to help one another. And when the people finally came down and saw that, and they felt the spirit. Now, I tell you that we had to go through this trial. We had to go through this experience because we knew that there was so much evil that we couldn't, we didn't know what was going to happen. We had no clue. We just knew we had to do what we were supposed to do, right? I knew that I was had to find these records. And when I saw what was happening to the ranchers, and I'm searching through and I'm getting other people to help me because I don't know these people, but I couldn't go home. There were so many miracles. I, I wish I could tell all, all the stories. One of these days, I'm going to get my book done, so you get both of them, so I can get, tell you. But it was a spiritual mission. So on, one day, I'm going to tell you, I was in Chad Carge's office, and I, maybe some of you know Chad, but he was the head of the refuge, right? And I had already gone through the whole rest of the building, searching for evidence, and I, I was in his, his office, and I said, hmm, something's here. The spirit was so strong. Something's here. I could feel it. I was playing a hot and cold game. Okay, it's, uh, I don't know what I'm looking for, but I feel it, right? And I went over to the counter over here, and I felt there was something. There's a, a whole bank of drawers underneath that cabinet. And I, as I get closer, I could feel it like it's warming up, you know? And I reached down in this bottom drawer, and I pull it open, and I pull out this first file. And in that file was original clippings, Waco, Ruby Ridge, all, uh, all of the Oklahoma City bombing, everything. They're all, it's like he's collecting them. What the heck is up with that? It was really eerie. It gave me goosebumps up my neck. Wow, I put that back. And then I feel something else, but that's not what I'm looking for, okay? So I have all of these, there's a bunch of racks with files up on the counter. And I put my hand up and I feel this heat. And I know that somewhere is a file. There's something I'm looking for. And it took a minute. It was like I'm, my hand's on fire. And I see it and I pull it. Okay. It says geo. Does anybody know what that means? It's geothermal. Right? There is a map in color of the hot hot water that exerts from, that, that comes from the land. Listen, the whole of Oregon is covered in what? Lava rock, right? Now, I've been mining, my husband's and I have been mining since the 70s. So I know about mining. I know we, did, we drilled uranium, we mined uranium, we mined gold, we mined a soda ash, we mined coal. We knew, I knew what this is, okay? I know where the minerals run, I know what was happening. And I pulled that map out and I went, oh my gosh, nobody would have known what was there. But I did. And I tried to take copies of it and make triplicate copies and guess what happened? We were out of ink, but I had black and white. So I did it in black and white, made the copies, put everything back, and then somebody was in the office with me. That day, I showed it to them. The next night, I'm walking out about 11.30 at night. Now listen, we knew that there was drones above us. We knew that there was airplanes up there. We weren't putting anything out on these little things because we knew that they were monitoring everything that was said and everything that was done. We knew that, okay? We could hear them because it was so quiet. The sound bounced off the ground. So we knew it. So somebody comes to me, which was media, and says, look what I found. And there on this iPad is my map. Holy crap, I didn't have to know. I knew where it came from. I was sick to my stomach. Because you know where I you know where I, I know where that information went. To DC. Okay? It went to Washington, DC. And who was watching for me? Miss Hillary herself. Mm. So now you have 
chemical resource, uranium one, the same reasons that they went after us in Utah, Nevada, and now Harney County. And they're stealing the land and the resources, right? And I know this. But that's what was happening. So now when Valerie Jarrett sends the email to Kate Brown that says, shut it down, whoa. But my heart's already up in my throat because I know now that they have now saw what I was doing, right? And I'm a little bit nervous. This is two days before they come after us. So there was a lot of questions after Lavoie's shot of if he had a gun, right? And I couldn't say that because there was too many things that were out. But I know he didn't have a gun. I said that. He does not have a gun. Oh, yes, I knew there was guns in that truck. They were underneath the seat. We could have got at them if we wanted to, and no, nobody intended to. We just had no idea what they were doing or why human beings would <coughs> act the way they act. I couldn't believe that they intended to kill us. And they did intend to kill us. They just didn't know that myself and Victoria were inside that truck. Because you see, we only got in at the very last second before that truck left. They didn't have time for the informant to inform them what and where. So, Lavoie died for what he believed in. He was murdered because he stood his ground. But he knew it was in defense of us and his belief. I am eternally grateful for him. And I have to continue working for these men. Because you see, now I have all these guys are in jail. And even though they put me in jail, here's what happened. I was never afraid. Because on the third night, I had a spiritual experience. And I'm going to share with you. Because as I was, I was singing the whole time. They thought I'd lost my mind. Okay, but but when when I sing hymns, then it keeps the spirit and the light around me. And I it's all this evil. It was just evil things going on. And and so um, I would sing. But this night, um, I was kneeling by my little mat thing with, you know, I don't know if you ever been Joe. But, um, and I'm pouring out my heart because you see, I had a notebook in my hand. And it had ranchers' names and phone numbers on it. And I'm thinking, worst case scenario now, what's really going to happen? I'm praying that everybody from Harney County goes out there and tells the feds to go home and tell the sheriff to stand up and do his job. <coughs> and guess what? I didn't know what's going on because I'm locked in these boxes. I have no idea. I hadn't seen, talked to anybody. I hadn't talked to anybody except the attorney that they appointed me. I didn't know what was going on. But I knelt there and I prayed because I got worried about the people there. And I knew that they weren't going to protect that. We had to save the evidence. I had all the evidence. And how was that going to happen? When they, caught, when they got me, right, when they arrested me, they didn't arrest me first, you saw that. When, when they... Uh, took things from me. There was a flash drive in my pocket because we ran out of ink. So I, so we were putting them on a flash drive and they got it. And I told them to preserve the evidence and they didn't preserve the evidence because my attorney, who I said save the evidence, I took a video inside that vehicle. Guess what she did? She went straight to the prosecutors and told them about that evidence. Whoa! You know how I knew that? Because suddenly, they end up with it. But the lucky thing for us, not lucky because God was watching over us, right? 
it was the detective in Deschutes County who had it already, because when he did his investigation, he took it. And he probably wondered why the prosecutors wanted it. Why did the feds want it? Right? He knew that that, that video was on there now. And so he watched it. Now look, if they hadn't been looking for it and they didn't know it was there, I had a 64 gig flash drive in there. I had over 10,000 pictures and family videos that were already on there. They would have had a long time before they actually ran across it, right? And it came out within days and it was released into the media. So I knew. Well, anyway, I ha when I'm that night, I'm praying. And I'm praying that the people will be safe, that they'll stand up and do what they have to do. I don't know how to save the evidence. And it was the most humbling experience. But the Lord speaks to me, and he tells me four things. He tells me, you're going to get out. I put you in that truck to be the second witness to the murder. I'm sifting and I'm sorting and I'm coming to sing my song. I was so thrilled, I can't even tell you. Not because of getting out as much as he's in charge and I'm not, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so this is awesome. And how do I tell these guys that are locked up that I'm getting out? I can't. So when we're riding in the elevator together, going up in the jail, they put me on the outside of the, of the gate and they have all the guys, now they've gathered more, into the big uh, elevator. And I say to them, whoever gets out goes for help, right? <laughs> they had no idea. Later on, when I get out, because they threw me out, literally threw me out, and they, they weren't supposed to, right? They said, we're going to let you out, but not until, they said, nobody gets out, first of all. And then they said, okay, we want to release, but we, but not until the final four left. That's the first clue I ever had. There was only four left. And I'm thinking, where did everyone go? So I go, I'm happy to go back to the cell. Because I don't want to, I, I don't want any, I want them to save the evidence. Right? I don't want anything to happen to them. By, by supper time, they come to me and they say, so what size do you wear? You're getting out. And my heart is sick. They killed him. My first thought is they killed him. I don't, I, you know, how, why am I getting out? I knew that God was in charge. And the months go through. How many of you believe that we were going to win in court? Did you believe we were going to win in court? Why did you believe that? Because you were innocent. God's in charge. Because God's in charge. Well, the attorneys didn't believe we were going to be out. The judge didn't believe we were going to get out. Nobody, none of our attorneys, they bet me money that we're going to jail. That's the people who's supposed to be defending us, right? They bet me that we weren't going to. And But what did we do every day? Some of you were there. Every single day we did what? We circled on our knees and we stood in, in circles. We held hands. We prayed. We prayed. Now, if anybody remembers what I would pray when we'd say that every day, is I would say, bless that jury that they can hear the things they cannot hear and see the things they cannot see and have the courage to stand and do what they know is right. Is that true? Every time. And that's what we did. And guess what happened? Number four happened. Took him ten days. But he did. Okay? But I knew that I wasn't going to jail because God told me that. Now, I don't know about everybody else, but I knew that I wasn't going to be in jail. Because God's in charge. He's never told me something he didn't do. And I can tell you, and I stand here and testify to you today, that each of us has a job. 
He asked us to do things in our life. We have to find out what that is and do it because we all made covenants before we came here for that very purpose. How much time do I have? They had the class, and by the way, Mark is phenomenal, right? He has done such a wonderful job of research. I am so impressed. Um, I have a, oh, sorry, you know, like Jeanette, I, I don't know how to run these dang machines. They're just like, my kids try to teach me all the time. <coughs> Mom, okay, well, I can get it on someday. So, every day we're reading the scriptures. And this is actually in Moroni in the Book of Mormon. Because if you understand what the Book of Mormon is, it's the history of the United States uh, of America. And in the back of it, it says, in Moroni 10, it says, Behold, I would exhort you that when you shall read these things, if it be wisdom in God that you should read them, then ye would remember how merciful the Lord hath been unto the children of men from the creation of Adam even down until the time that ye shall receive these things and ponder it in your heart. And when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that ye would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true. And if, he shall, and ye, if ye ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, ye may know the truth of all things. And, whose, and whatsoever thing is good is just and true. Wherefore, nothing that is good denieth the Christ, but acknowledges that he is. And ye may know that he is by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wherefore, I would exhort you that ye deny, deny not the power of God. For he worketh by power, according to the faith of the children of men. The same today, tomorrow, and forever. And again I exhort you, my brethren, that ye deny not the gifts of God, for they are many, and they come from the same God. And there are different ways that these gifts are administered, but it is by the same God. So, think about some of these gifts that you have. So, God who worketh in all, all in all, and they are given by the manifestation of the Spirit of God unto men to profit them. For behold, to one is given by the same Spirit of God, that he may teach the words of wisdom. Right? Some people are very knowledgeable. They always know things. And to another that he may teach the word of knowledge by the same spirit. And to another exceedingly great faith. And to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. And again to another that he may work mighty miracles. And again to another that he may prophesy concerning all things. And again to another the beholding of angels and ministering spirits. And again to another all kinds of tongues. And again to another, the interpretation of tongues and of diverse kinds of tongues. And all these gifts come by the Spirit of God, and they come to every man severally, according as he will. Do you believe that? So none of us are the same. Nobody has the same job, right? We don't have the same job. We have different things that we have to do. And as long as we are doing what he tells us to do, we feel it in our hearts. And when those people came down to the refuge, I say, why are you here? And when they say to me, I just felt like I was supposed to come, I say, yes, because God sent you, right? I knew that. They knew that. And by the power of God and by his hand, I'm telling you and I testify to you that this took place because we are saving the Constitution, right? And it happens wherever he wants it to happen. And it happens with those people who believe and have faith. And those people who are doing the right things for the right reason. It's a Chris Bryles who stands up and says, tell the truth. I only expect the truth. And when you go into a court of law and they lie and they cheat and they steal and they kill, that is not the truth. So we have got to go back to the truth. And he and I have not sat idly by for the last three years. I have been working diligently to get these men from jail and to learn. And he has taught me many things. And now I have the answer. And we are going to do just like Mark said, and we're going to learn how to become those kind of people 
that we can stand up on how to get yourself free by the hand of God. And we have to, we have to do those things. We, it's easy for everybody to say, oh, look, what that was just, that just accidentally happened. Or that just, we knew that happened with a prayer, right? And all the attorneys want to pat themselves on the back that they did it because everybody wants to take credit, okay? That's not who did it, I promise you. Let me tell you how crazy that was. We get acquitted. They tase our attorney, okay? They take him to the ground in front of me and tase him. And I am mad and mad or neck, right? And they send the marshals in and push us out. Do you, let me tell you something about that attorney. That attorney gave it all. He's lost his family. He's lost his job. He's can't, because they kicked him out of the bar. I'm telling you that when you cannot go against the evil, because that is an evil organization. Actually, they did him a favor, and he doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to tell him. <laughs> so, so, Here's, here's the thing. We have to have faith in God because He is the supreme being. Things are coming and we see what's happening in the world, right? We did take information. There are people, and I can't say I do anything because I am only a connector. But He sends all these teams, I call them teams, all these people, these teams, with the information that comes to bring about his will is a beautiful puzzle. I call it a puzzle because it's gorgeous as it begins to come together of what's happening. We are just the little fish in the pond. And as we expose some information to Washington, D.C., <coughs> hmm. you see some things that are happening there? Mm -hmm. Because there was a little team who went to D.C. with some information. And it is working. And the truth is the truth. No matter where it comes from. Just know that I celebrate the boy's life because he's my friend. I know that he would still be here standing and speaking if he had that opportunity. But let me tell you. The bell's real thin. And, and I've told many of my patriot people in my tea party who have passed away, it's the gray hairs, you know, now we're getting to be the gray hairs, but listen, you don't get out of this that easy. We've been fighting for this freedom for a very long time, and just because you're on the other side doesn't mean, make you get out of this. You're still standing with us. And they are. And I bury this testimony today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. When uh, Shauna was saying, you know, she was asking people, why'd you come to the refuge? And they said, just because I felt I had to. Now I know why one year ago I felt I had to do this. No, nope, there was no other explanation for it. Oh, sorry. Okay, Sandy, Sue, would you guys bring the containers up here? We're going to draw for some prizes. <laughs>